And we are live, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Punch Perfect Boxing Channel. Before we get going today, please make sure to like the video, comment your prediction for this fight down below, and if you're new, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, help me on my journey to 5k before the end of the year. Today I'm going to be doing my Punch Perfect prediction for Danny Garcia making his debut at £154 against Jose Benavidez. We're going to get into this fight, um, I've got a lot of Probably more negative opinions than positive on this matchup. Um, it's not a fight I'm desperate to see. It's not a fight that I'd really thought was in the realms of possibilities either. Um, and it's also a fight that... Listen, we're going to get into talking about Danny Garcia, but I'm not particularly keen on him at 154 either. And for Jose Benavidez, you know, on his side of the argument, I just don't think he can be competitive at a certain level anymore. Um, and we're going to get into it and talk about it. So... The way I've summed up this matchup, just before I do move on, I don't particularly like this fight because it is a fighter that doesn't belong in this weight class and also a fighter that for me doesn't belong being in a main event at this stage in their career and hasn't lived up to his potential. So we'll start by talking about Danny Garcia, the more celebrated of the two, the guy that's achieved more, the guy that... Um, yeah, has been the bigger name in the sport over the past decade or so. Um, Danny Garcia for me is someone that I've always had quite strong opinions on because I feel like there's a big difference in the career of Danny Garcia from the fighter at 140 to the one at 147 and I'm sure from the one that's even at 154 now that we're going to see this Saturday. At 154 I think Danny Garcia was a world class fighter with an elite left hook. That's how I would look at him. I didn't think of him as an elite fighter. I think of him as a world-class fighter, but with an elite left hook, one of the best punches in the sport. A Donair-esque left hook. It separated him. It's what put him above just being world level. It was his get-out-of-jail card. It was a spectacular shot that could lay anyone out at any given point. He could be getting outboxed by someone like Amir Khan, but he could land that shot and it could completely change the fight. An elite left hook, but a world-class fighter. He had some world-class wins at that weight class. As I mentioned, the Amir Khan win, the Lucas Matisse win. But there were a couple of times I actually felt he probably should have had an L on the record. I thought he lost to Mauricio Herrera. I've never seen anyone say that they thought Garcia won that fight. If you did, get down in the comments. But I've never seen anyone suggest that you know Herrera didn't win that fight. It's one of those that everyone considers a robbery. The one that was slightly closer and less people um, probably call it a robbery. But I felt Lamont Peterson got the better of him as well. Not to the same extent that Herrera did. A very different stylistic matchup. But I also thought Danny struggled in that fight. So that's why I was never willing to call him elite. But I felt he had an elite punch that could ultimately get him a win against someone that was maybe better than him. Or more skilled than him. E.g. Amir Khan. He moved up then to 147. And I felt like he was still a world class fighter. But didn't have the elite punch anymore. The guys were bigger, stronger, more physical, better chins, more durable. And I don't think he ever quite had the time or the space to set up that left hook like he once did at, at 140. So when he fought a Thurman, when he fought a Spence, when he fought a Porter, he was never the, you know, really stood a chance in there because those guys were just more durable than him. They were more skilled than him. They were bigger than him. So he went from being a world class fighter at 140 with an elite punch to a world class fighter. A 147 against a stronger caliber of opposition without the elite punch he's his left hook was never quite the same once he moved up it just became far more you know less effective and now he's going up to 154 where he's not gonna have that punch anymore he may knock someone out if it's a Rod Salka type opponent again but that punch isn't going to be there at 154 against some real beasts in that division Jose Benavidez isn't one of them but if he does take on a world-class name they're going to be able to take those shots just like Thurman, Porter, etc. did, like Spence did. But I'm not even sure he's going to be world class. He's always at least been competitive at world level at 147 and then at 140 he was legit world class. At 154 I'm not even sure he's that. I mean look at the world class 154 pounders now, you, you know, outside of Charlo. You've got Castano, you've got Fundora, look at a Tony Harrison type name. You know, you've got... Um, You've got Tim Zhu, you know, you've got Madrimov, you've got this these level of fighters, and PBC have a lot of them, so I'm sure he'll be able to take on a lot of them. I'm not even sure he's as good as them at 154, just ability-wise. So, like I say, this journey from being an, a world-class fighter with an elite punch to just being a world-class fighter without the punch, I'm not even sure he's going to be world-class anymore. He's been out the ring for a long time, he's not been active enough over the last couple of years. The Spence fight was the last time he fought, which was the end of 2020, and in that fight... 
he was really being used as almost a measuring stick for where Spence was after the accident. So the the point of Danny Garcia sort of being a prize fighter and one of the the sort of world level guys in the sport, those days are, feel like they're long gone to me anyway. And I know outside the ring, he has great um, sort of property investment businesses and he seems to be really looking after his money and doing well for himself. I'm not sure quite what the motivation is this stage. Does he just want to have one more fight and sign out on a victory? Potentially that could happen. And he's thinking, do you know what? I'd rather do it at 154 than struggling to make 147. I'd just like to have one more at 154 and then I'm done. But ultimately, you know, he, he can continue to fight on because at 154, PBC have an awful lot of good stock. Ultimately, he could jump into a rematch with Thurman or someone like that down the line, potentially, if they wanted to move up as well. There's loads of options available for him, but I'm just not sure any of us are keen to see Danny Garcia in that mix anymore, as we once were. But don't get me wrong, Danny Garcia is still a world-level guy. I'm just not sure he can be that at 154. As I say, just the, the inactivity for me and not really the motivation being there for him questions his kind of agenda for me so Danny Garcia is the one that I'm not convinced belongs at like middleweight his opponent Jose Benavidez is the one that I mentioned at the start of the video I'm just not keen to see him in a main of in a main event anymore I'm not keen to see him you know at the top of a PBC card against a, a Danny Garcia type name I'm just not Jose Benavidez once upon a time was one of the most exciting prospects in the sport we all thought guaranteed world champion we all thought he's going to go on to achieve great things maybe even at the start of his career maybe he had a little bit more hype than David did at the start of his career but it's really just tailed off and for me has never really actually been world class let alone you know a, a world champion at multiple weights like you might have expected maybe one day no, for me, he's never even really proved that. Um, kind of came through the weight classes and didn't have a great deal of sort of uh, victories. I thought he was matched quite well early on. He had some good development fights. But when he was ready to take the next step, he never really took it. And his life outside the ring is the thing that's hindered him the most. He's been involved in too many situations he shouldn't have been involved in. He's had some bad injuries, had a, the incident with the shooting as well, which for me has completely changed his career. And then, yeah, the, the injuries to his legs just mean that he isn't as mobile as he once was. Obviously, he got thrown in uh, with Terence Crawford. Um, and yeah, when he got thrown in with Terence Crawford, obviously lost that fight, so his stock kind of dropped significantly. Then moved up and uh, went to light middleweight and fought Torres, who recently fought Hamza Shiraz over here in the UK, and that was a robbery. He lost to Torres, and if Hamza Shiraz is beating him, that kind of tells you the level of where Benavidez is at. The movement in the Crawford fight, he didn't look as mobile after the injuries. To then suffer more injuries and then fight Torres, he didn't look mobile again either. I think he just looks so restricted physically. He just doesn't look like the fighter he once was, and I think physically he can't compete at the top level anymore. Torres was robbed against him. That was a really bad decision. Benavidez has fought once since 2018. I just don't feel he should be in a main event. I don't think he's at any point ever going to live up to his potential. I don't think he's even physically capable of it now. He's stagnated way too much. And whilst he'll probably see this as a big opportunity to get a victory over a big name and it could reignite his career, I think it's more of a cash-out type job. It's you know well paid against a decent name. And this is more about Danny Garcia than it is about building Benavidez up. That's my personal thoughts on it. So, ultimately, I will watch this fight because I watch all, all forms of boxing. But ultimately, I'm I'm not buzzing for it. I don't think it's a fight we need to see. I don't think it should be a sort of PBC main event at this stage either. Um, at least they didn't stick on pay-per-view like they do most other things. But some decent names on the undercard, like Gary Antoine Russell, who I'm really high on. But, oh, like I say, I just... My, my fundamental point around this fight is I don't particularly like him. Who do I think is going to win? I think Danny Garcia is going to win. Like I say, I think Benavidez has been far too inactive, fought once since 2018, and then in that fight he, he looked terrible. It was a robbery. May have underestimated Torres, but regardless, he didn't look himself physically, didn't even look himself physically against Crawford. Managed to go 12 rounds. Didn't think it was one of Crawford's more sort of polished performances. He got him out of there in the end. But for me, Benavidez, the incidents that have happened outside the ring, the injuries, it's all caught up with him now. I don't think he developed at the right pace. And I think he's lost all that momentum. All that development years are gone. And I think he's coming towards the end of his career and he'll just be used as an opponent from now on. So I'm going to go for Danny Garcia. Like I say, I don't think the elite punch is there anymore. Um, took Crawford 12. I don't think he, he has the power that Crawford does. I think ultimately he'll land a good left hook here and there and I think he'll counter punch his way to a decision. don't think it'll be a particularly entertaining fight. I think Benavidez will try and play it safe. 
um, and try not to get knocked out. I think Garcia's inactivity will show and his timing will be a little bit off. And yeah, I think he'll um, not exactly gun for the knockout either. So I think Garcia on a points is probably the safe bet here. Unless Benavidez somehow turns his career around, which could happen, but to me, I can't see it. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel. The other big fight this weekend is Bidham Smith versus Chamberlain over here in the UK. Prediction out for that now. Go check it out. But thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.